What time is it? Well, let's jump into this together and I'll explain. Let's go. Welcome to this episode of Subcompact Tractor Projects. In this episode, it's time for an oil change. We've hit our 50 hours on the LSMT125, and it's now time to change the oil. So, in prior episodes, I've showed how to remove the cowl, the bucket, and all that other kind of stuff. So, we now have the oil filter, which is right here exposed. We got a pan down there to catch the oil. So, it's time that we drain the new tractor oil out of this and put in some good stuff. So let's get into this and I'll show you how we're going to go about this. Okay, so to start our project, we've driven the tractor up on a set of ramps. We've put down some cardboard for me to lay on on the ground. And we have the parking brake set and we also have an 80 pound bag of concrete behind the back tire, stopping it from rolling back if the brake should give out. So it should be relatively safe. Now it's time to go underneath the tractor and drain the oil. Now one of the things which I've done is I ran the tractor a little bit and warmed it up so the oil is warm but not hot and so it should drain out pretty good. So let's go ahead and get the oil draining. So hopefully it's in focus and you can see we have basically an inserted uh, hex to uh, remove the plug. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to remove this, drain the oil. I don't think I'm going to be able to video it because it's going to take too many hands to do this. But you pretty much get the idea is just take that plug out and the oil will run. So here as you can see we have the oil draining out. It was really a bear getting this plug out of the oil pan. So uh, actually I had to go borrow some extra tools. So basically this takes an 8 millimeter uh, hex and notice the long ratchet on this. It took all of that uh, to actually get this plug out. I don't know if they powder coated it in at the factory or exactly what they did, but this was a bear. So again, it, it is still righty tighty, lefty loosey. Comes out that way. And uh, if it's the first time that you're changing it, you're probably going to need a bit of leverage like this. So something to expect. All right, so I'm going to finish letting this drain out and then I'm going to put the plug back in and then we're going to go tackle the oil filter. Okay, so now we need to remove the oil filter. Basically what I'm going to do is use a pair of these to grab onto this and twist it off. So again, this is going to take a couple hands to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera and then we'll come back and take a look at everything. So here we have it off and you can see that there's a little bit of oil running down the side of the block. So I'm going to take a rag and clean that off and then we're going to get the new filter ready. So here we have the LS oil filter. Now I did decide to go with the LS oil filter uh, rather than say the Wix, which is, this is significantly more expensive, but because uh, I have quite a bit of warranty on this machine and this is my 50 hour, I kind of wanted to stick with stock and I figured a few extra bucks is worth it, so your mileage may vary. Now one of the pieces that I have done is, again, as you see that the um, oil filter does go on sideways and so if you were to fill this up with oil because again you're going to have a short period where this is going to run dry as the oil pumps through the system it would pour out so what I do is I pour it oh about quarter full and then I rotate it around so it saturates the exterior filter so I don't know if you can see in there but basically the filter is totally uh, wettened by this and I also put a little bit of a bead around the uh, rubber gasket as it goes on to the motor so it seats there uh, it, you know slides a little bit until it tightens so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to uh, finger tight this and I've cleaned this the surface up and you want to make sure you don't cross thread this and this is kinda hard doing it one-handed uh, but anyways now I've got that on. Now I'm going to put it on hand tight and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from the front with my oil wrench and tighten this on until it's simply snug. Now one of the things you want to do is make sure you don't over tighten this. You know, just tighten it so it's uh, you know really snug. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to come back and we're going to put some oil in there. Okay, so this is where it fills with oil. Now I have this stuck in there so it doesn't fall out. When I do fill it, I'm going to use both hands and fill it uh, like this so it fills in there. And basically I've got a gallon of oil over here that I'm going to put in. Now this takes 0.8 gallons of uh, oil, so be careful as you're putting it in. If you have a gallon container, you're not going to want to put it all in. So you're going to want to put the majority in, check it on the dipstick, and then 
uh, you know, go back and add any if you need to. You know, your final measurement will be taken after you let it run for 20, 30 seconds, a minute. Um, double check the dipstick and you should be close. And with that, you just kind of top it off if you need to and you should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and add the oil to this and we're going to check it. Okay, so I've added oil and I don't know if you can see, but I'm uh, to the higher side. I'm not to the total top, but I am to the higher side. Now, keep in mind, the filter is only wet. When I start it, it's going to go down. So uh, I'm in a pretty good safe range to go ahead and start the motor and let it uh, fill the rest of the system. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I started it up. I pulled it on the level ground. And uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit to the high side of center, which is good. So uh, that works out well. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you a little bit about is the oil that I use for this. So what I actually ended up using is a 15W40 diesel oil. Um, now, one of the things when you check the manual, it shows like an API CL-4. I, you know, I really played heck trying to find a cross match for that um, that I was comfortable with. So if you're looking for oil, look for a quality diesel um, 15W40. Now you can change that depending upon your temperature and I'll put a little graph that's in the manual on the screen. So with this, hopefully you found this useful and interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe is going to be over there and let me know in the comments any suggestions or questions you might have about this. Cheers. Mm -hmm.